Hi, I'm Alex Grieve and welcome to Higher Voltage. I'm going to show you how to hack the Bosch Powerline CX motor drive to change the 20 mile an hour speed limit to 40 miles an hour. The way this is done is by putting a microcontroller in between the speed sensor of the bicycle and the cycle computer up here. Once a bicycle reaches 19 miles an hour, the microcontroller takes over and cuts the speed in half. So once you exceed 19 miles an hour, the cycle computer is going to read half the speed you are going. However, once you reach 40 miles an hour, this is going to read 20 miles an hour and the speed limit again will kick in. All right, before we do get into how to do this, there are a couple things. First of all, be responsible. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, be courteous. Many of us mountain bikers have discovered these e-bikes and we absolutely love them. They've revitalized mountain biking for us. But we're also now finding that the places we can ride them are restricted, mainly due to people who are very rude and not courteous. With that, I'll show you how to hack it. You're going to have to build a basic microcontroller circuit, something like the one I've shown in this photo. This is a basic schematic of everything wired up. You need two 390 ohm resistors, one 51K resistor, an Omron solid state relay, an Arduino, and then some kind of voltage regulator to power the system. Now I'm wiring this into the bicycle itself, which is a 36 volt battery. So I used a Pololu high voltage regulator, which steps down to seven and a half volts. Here are a few more pictures indicating how I wired everything up. The bottom board is a cheap 0.1 inch perforated board you can find on eBay or about a dozen other places. The switch in the photo is a bypass. Should this microcontroller fail, I'd like to go back to the regular system. Here you can see how I wired up my switch. On the left is the bicycle speed sensor pin. These are the wires and leads that come from the speed sensor in the back of the bike. The wires going into the plug are just the two gray 22 gauge wires that I stripped about a quarter of an inch of the insulation off and I just shoved them straight into the plug itself. On the right are all the connections to the microcontroller board with the parts that connect to them so you know where they go. This cable here is a bit hard to find. It is a Bosch light cable. Bosch makes it very clear that they do not want you modifying their drive system as modifying it to go past 28 miles an hour would constitute a motor vehicle. But when it comes to choosing between legalities and becoming a statistic, I'll toe the line with legalities and not become one of these guys. A quick Google search for bicycle wreck turns up a whole lot of photos of cars running over bicyclists. So since this channel is about hacking and not legalities, this is where I got my cable. This is scooter ready. There are a couple other places to get the cable, but this is very hard to find because Bosch probably doesn't want you finding it. There's a small tab on the side to keep it from going into the drive system. And I just cut it off with a pair of diagonals. All right, a few things about insta installing this bike. The way I'm getting power is from the bike's power system. That is the 36 volt lines. The way I tap them is I pulled the plug out, then I used a pair of wire strippers to open the insulation up. I then took these wires, wrapped them around that wire, soldered them in place, then put two layers of liquid electrical tape around them so that they don't short out. You also notice that I have my wires zip tied at multiple locations. This keeps them from getting tangled in the moving parts like this crank assembly. Another thing is there's this board, you can see I've kept it fairly compact because I wanted to keep it inside the drive system if possible and not exposed. And so the only place I found that it'll fit is right here in this pocket. To attach it, I'm just using double-sided tape. And after cleaning this up, it should stick here just fine. Maybe not super securely, but secure enough. Now you might be wondering why do I have this switch up here? Well. First of all, you'll notice that I coated my microcontroller board and everything in hot glue. And this is to protect it from vibration and most importantly, moisture. Microcontrollers are not very good with moisture. And with this bicycle, if I get caught in the rain or decide to ride it through the mud, the last thing I want water to do is get into my microcontroller and short it out. Thus, I lose my power system. But that might still happen anyway. And just in case it does, this is a bypass switch. In one position, it activates the microcontroller and makes sure the speed sensor goes through the microcontroller before it goes to the computer. 
In the other position, instead, now it runs like the bicycle normally does. The microcontroller is completely bypassed. While this is an optional accessory, again, it's good to have a fail safe because, well, you don't want something going wrong when you're far away from home. You don't want to lose this power system. Here's what the system looks like in action. Right now I'm in bypass mode. That is, the microcontroller is completely bypassed and thus, at 20 miles an hour, I stop getting a boost. But throwing the switch, now the microcontroller is part of the circuit. Watch what happens. See the speed just drop? Drop back down 10 miles an hour and it seems to accelerate a little bit more slowly, but I'm going much faster. Right there, I topped out at 31 miles an hour, not 15. The microcontroller was simply in the way, stopping it from happening. Now the microcontroller is engaged the whole time here. You can see the numbers climb up. And then as they get to the transition period, they get a little bit glitchy. That is, the speed isn't exactly perfect. And yeah, this is probably an error in my code, but it does seem to work fine and I'm not losing speed. So if the sensor isn't perfect, well, I'm okay with that. So, getting into it. I left these a little bit loose because, well, I've already done the modification and I simply reassembled it, you know, halfway just to make sure that this video went smoothly. So you'll remove this bolt and then install your crank puller. You'll want to thread this. You'll see two sets of threads, an outer thread and inner thread. This threads into the outer thread. So just thread it right here into your crank. And assuming I can get this thing lined up, You'll feel it seat into place. Once it seats into place, run this around until you feel it stop. Once you feel it stop, keep cranking. It's now pulling that crank off the bike. Once it gets loose, go ahead and wiggle and off it comes. The next thing you want to remove is this lower plate. There are two screws in the back and two screws up here. And these are your Torx drivers. Now, I only put this one in, so just to make this go a little bit smoother for you, there's really not a whole lot to it. Um, strangely enough, it won't fall out because this, when you remove just one or two screws because it's seated in there pretty good. Okay, next thing you're going to have to remove is this cover. There are three bolts, this one, this one, and this one here. So to get to this one up here, you're going to have to remove this upper cover first. That'll expose this screw. And then you can release this one. And there we have it. Hacked power drive. Uploading the code to the microcontroller is pretty easy. Once you've downloaded my code and the Arduino environment, go ahead and fire up the program. Now, this line here, you can see that determines the speed. The higher the number, the lower the speed will be before it cuts the speed in half. And you can see that's done by this interrupt command down here, where if the speed exceeds that number, it doubles that number. Therefore, it cuts the number of pulses in half. Now, simply go to Tools, and you'll want to select your board. In this case, it's an Arduino Pro Mini. Then, you'll need to be sure you're on the right COM port. If you're on the right COM port, then all you have to do is click upload. As a side note, you'll want to upload the code to the board before connecting the voltage regulator or you could damage the board. Okay, with that, go out and enjoy your new ride. But please, as always, be responsible. If at any time you feel like you're out of control because you're going too fast, stop pedaling. And remember, just because your bike can do 40 miles an hour right now doesn't mean you should. I'm Alex Grieve. And I'll catch you on the next episode of Higher Voltage.